Let's begin first uh, with uh, your latest projections. So you now project a further slowdown of the world's economy as expected in light of the Russian war on Ukraine, as well as soaring inflation and supply chain disruptions. What are your latest projections and how do they compare with the ones in January? And what are the factors that concern you the most and that might cause you to further cut growth projections moving forward or raise inflation forecasts? Thank you very much for having me. Uh, indeed, the war in Ukraine has been a major setback for the global recovery. And we're now projecting uh, global growth this year at 3.6, uh, which is uh, a significant downgrade. Uh, that corresponding number was 4.4% uh, just a few months uh, earlier. And when it comes to the factors that have driven this apart from the war, there's also the, um, the monetary tightening in advanced economies, as well as the slowdown in China. And when it comes to the risks and the type of things that worries, uh, worries us, um, the list is long. Uh, on top, of course, is the, the, the possibility of uh, intensification of the war and escalation of the sanctions. Um, as well as the possibility of social unrest in light of the high food prices, as well as uh, the, the possibility that inflation expectations become uh, unanchored. And of course, we should not forget that we are still having the COVID uh, pandemic going on. So one could also see an intensification of that, uh, which would also be a, a negative shock for the global recovery. As you mentioned, obviously, there's a lot of worry around Ukraine and Russia and the war that's ongoing. So the Ukrainian economy will significantly contract this year. Uh, and uh, so what are the latest projections when it comes to that? And what are the downside risks, first of all? Second of all, how are talks progressing for the uh, post-war plans to rebuild Ukraine and maintain financial stability? The, the loss of life that we've seen has been mounting and just the overall devastation, um, including of the critical infrastructure, a physical capital has just been unimaginable. Uh, so at, at this stage, as you can imagine, making any type of pr projections is really hard. Uh, that said, we do have a forecast of this year for the Ukrainian economy to contract by 35 uh, percent. But as I said, th this is subject to enormous uncertainty. Uh, and of course, we all hope that there will be a peaceful re resolution to the, to, to the war. And then we would be in a position to be, to be talking and to be thinking about the reconstruction of Ukraine, which is going to be a multi-year uh, project. Are you concerned about the possibility of either sanctioning the Russian energy sector should the war escalate, or at the very least, are you concerned about the impact on energy markets should Europe eventually wean itself off Russian oil and gas? And do you even see that as a possibility? Well, our baseline projections, the one that I mentioned, uh, do not incorporate uh, that uh, um, escalation of sanctions. It just assumes that the sanctions stay broadly at the level uh, that they are. And even with that assumption, we have significant downgrades of the uh, uh, forec growth forecast in, uh, in Europe uh, in, in particular. Now, we did consider the scenario, the one that you mentioned in an adverse uh, scenario in our re upcoming report. And uh, in that sort of setting, the, uh, the growth numbers that we put forward would be, uh, would be significantly, I mean, what we would see would be significantly worse than what we've uh, put forward uh, so far. Uh, and of course, the impact of that on the Russian economy is going to be even larger. So, uh, any specific numbers in this regard? Well, uh, in, in the adverse scenario that we, we've, we've considered the, the escalation of uh, sanctions to include energy market, together with further effects through uh, higher uh, commodity prices as well as higher inflation, in that type of scenario, the cumulative loss um, in terms of Russian uh, G GDP by the end of 2027 is in the order of 15 par percent. Now for the Euro area, I mean for Europe, for the EU actually, 
as a whole uh, that hit on the level of uh, real GDP is somewhere around 3% in 2023. To a lesser extent, we're already seeing uh, Russia maybe struggle to find uh, buyers for its uh, oil. So uh, should this escalate, uh, to what extent will the Russian economy be impacted if it can, at the first stage, not find buyers for its oil and gas? Well, if one were to, uh, to think of that scenario of um, uh, further energy um, sanctions and such, of course, the impact on the Russian economy would be substantial, in, including through the much reduced uh, export earnings. In the baseline, again, without such uh, uh, further sanctions, we are already projecting a decline in um, real growth in Russia in the order of uh, minus 8.5. Uh, so again, if we were to be in a scenario of energy uh, uh, sa sanctions, then the, the, these numbers are going to be much, much worse. Inflation is a major concern around the world as well at the moment, uh, especially since economic growth is still recovering from the COVID-19 pandemic. So we have seen a number of central banks raise rates to combat inflation, with further increases expected this year. Where do you see the sweet spot for rate hikes versus protecting economic growth? Inflation has become a major problem and it was already becoming, uh, inflation was becoming higher and more broad based even prior to the war. Now with that supply shock, or with the supply shock of, uh, of the high commodity prices that we've seen, we've seen even uh, further upward pressure, especially when it comes to uh, food and energy prices. So in that context, I think the, the main job of uh, central banks is to tackle that inflation uh, problem and to make sure that there is no uh, kind of spiral between higher prices and then higher wages and high inflation expectations that then feed back into higher prices. Because ultimately, uh, uh, severing that, that link and making sure that it, it does not uh, become an even bigger problem is what is going to protect real incomes and, 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 and make sure that uh, growth proceeds going forward. Last but not least, uh, how concerned are you about persistent inflation as a result of the war, supply chain disruptions, rising commodity and food prices as well? And where do you see oil prices uh, on average this year and maybe next? This is indeed one of the major concerns that we have, and we spent a, cons uh, a lot of uh, time in our report uh, talking about it, again, how, uh, how important it is uh, to, for central banks to act in order to tackle the inflation problem. And uh, of course, this is going to be really challenging, especially in an environment of higher commodity prices. Our forecasts, which are based on market pricing, are for average oil prices to be uh, around uh, 1.6 this year, which is a significant increase relative to last year when that number was uh, $69 uh, per barrel. Now, again, the, the critical thing here is to make sure that these higher headline inflation numbers don't fill over into inflation expectations, which so far, I think, and this is probably the silver lining, that so far medium term inflation expectations have remained reasonably well anchored in most countries.